Welcome to the France 24 debate, the controversy whirring around Emmanuel Macron. Just what did the French president know about the man at the centre of this whole affair that's kicking off here in France, Alexandre Benalla? Video of his violent behaviour on May the 1st has shocked France and beyond. Not so much because of the French police being seen to be heavy-handed, but such scenes sadly aren't strange on the streets of France during demonstrations. It's more to do with Benalla's closeness to President Macron that set alarm bells ringing. Macron's been quoted thus rejecting that someone in his entourage is above the law. Uh, Macron has asked his chief of staff to reorganise the Elysee and make sure such dysfunction never happens again. Well, I guess to discuss the implications of the macron benella affair are Olga Givenet, Member of Parliament for La République en Marche. Olga, thanks for being with us. Thank you. On the other side of our studio, but not necessarily against, because it's not like that here. Karim Bouaran, excuse me. Bouaran, Mark. Bouaran, thank you very much, sir. Spokesperson for the Socialist Party. I got it right in rehearsals. Thank you, sir. Thanks for being with us. Etienne Pujol is a lawyer and expert in labour and employment law. Thanks for being with us, sir. And joining us by satellite from Brussels is Nicholas Vinnecker, who is editor of Politico Europe. Thank you, Nicholas, for being with us. First, let's have a reminder of how all this has unfolded. A report from Yenna Lee. A man with a police helmet beating up protesters. This on the sidelines of the traditional May Day protests in Paris. The man walking away is Alexandre Benalla, an aide to none other than President Emmanuel Macron. The president's chief of staff had granted authorization to Benalla to go and observe the protests alongside police. Violence aside, even disguising oneself as a police officer is a criminal offence, liable to three years in prison and a fine of 45,000 euros. Fast forward to July 23rd at the opening of a parliamentary hearing on the incident. According to the Interior Minister, this is what he knew the day after. It was not until I got back from lunch early in the afternoon that during one of our daily briefings, my chief of staff informed me of the existence of a video showing acts of violence during May Day protests. He said that Alexandre Benalla had been identified as taking part in the violence. He then told me that he had informed the Paris police chief and that he had brought the case to the attention of the office of the President of the Republic. President Macron was in Australia at the time and reportedly told his staff to deal with the incident appropriately. May 3rd, Macron's chief of staff, Patrick Stroder, wrote this letter to Alexandre Benalla. Your behaviour has damaged the exemplarity that is expected at all times from agents working with the office of the president. As a consequence, I have decided to suspend you from your duties for 15 days, starting on the 4th of May 2018. Suspended, but not fired. The Elysee Palace also demoted the employee. Yet, newspaper Le Monde says Benalla was given an apartment in central Paris early July. He also still had a chauffeur-driven car and security clearance to the National Assembly. Over two and a half months after the incident, Le Monde identified the supposed author of police brutality as a presidential aide in disguise. Two days after the explosive article, the Elysee Palace fired Benalla the same day he was questioned by police. By the end of the week, Benalla was placed under formal investigation for assault, interference with police work and impersonation of a police officer. Yana yeah, Lee's report there. There are so many questions raised. We're trying to try and find some answers if we possibly can. But I think uh, getting to the very truth of the matter is proven to be a difficult thing. If you saw the performance by the Interior Minister in front of the uh, committee at the National Assembly today. But I'd like to start this debate by bringing in Olga Givenet, who's been kind enough to come in and speak to us from La République en Marche, um, Emmanuel Macron's party. How embarrassing is this for you and your colleagues? Well, it's a difficult uh, situation for us. We found out the the, uh, the event on uh, Thursday la last um, last week, and we all had a, a very hard discussion in the parliament. The question was, how do we deal with this? And uh, I don't know if you, you you saw this, but we managed to put an inquiry um, pro process uh, so we could have some uh, question answered. 
Uh, and today we had some uh, some uh, audition from the the minister of uh, interior. Uh, so we're starting the process. But just to say that it's been really quick that we took seriously the situation, and uh, we needed to work on it. Okay, quick. Well, it happened on May Day, and now the inquiry is open. So some people might say it wasn't quick enough. Karim, would you say? I would say first and foremost that we are in a terrible crisis mm. today. Terrible crisis, political crisis, first and foremost. A true uh, moral crisis, because someone has lied. Who has lied? The minister or the government? Macron himself? The administration? I don't know. And last but not least, uh, we have an institution crisis, because since uh, three days, four days, now everything is put on hold. And we have a big gap today between the version of uh, Gérard Collomb, the French interior minister, and uh, what uh, the chief of the police has said this afternoon. So that's crazy. And honestly, that's the uh, most important crisis that we never had since uh, 1945 in France. So that's a big, big crisis. And what will be the very next days? I really don't know. And the thing is that when you you listening one year ago, what Macron wanted to uh, amass in our country, it was exemplarity, transparency. So now we have a big crisis about what should be, uh, should be our republic. So that's why I'm very, very concerned today. Olga, I've got to bring you back in because you were laughing. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, you, you're talking about crisis. I would talk about one individual who was employed by the, uh, um, uh, the Elysee. Elysee. And uh, he is a 26-year-old guy. He was in charge of uh, the security. And, and today, I don't understand how uh, someone who comes from the Elysee can be entitled to uh, uh, disrespect proce procedures and disrespect also hierarchy. Uh, saying that it, it, it is a state crisis, I don't, I don't think it's uh, uh, at really too much. So, it's, we sorry, have to I'll find out it. what are the conditions and what are also um, the, uh, the effects for it. And definitely we want to have we some are, We are some talking about the security sure, of our country. And make sure that it doesn't hap happen again. Um, and, and this is experience also for us, because as you say, we, uh, we make sure that we have new person as in the politics um, and and for, for me, who is really new uh, in, into it, it's quite it's quite disrupting. And I th really think I, I I met this guy before, and he was part of the security. What was Many he like? What is he like? He, he, was he threatening? He's he well, he was quite quite. Great question. Cool. But is he threatening? Yeah. Big guy? No, um, doesn't look to me. He was uh, always working with the president. He, he's got other other security guy as well. And uh, and so this um, this happened. It was away from any of our duty or a president duty as well. So I, I just need, we need to make sure that the two subjects, there's the problem of this affair and there's also the other problem of the parliament because today we know, we know that it's quite handy for the opposition to make it as, as a crisis. We are in a big time of uh, talking about constitution and today we have obstruction. Today we have opposition hijacking and this is my, my first problem. Can you, can, you, can you imagine, Mark, that we are talking about the security of half country? We are, talking, we are talking about one guy who is 26 years old and he's in the middle of a big uh, uh, event, uh, May 2nd, and he says, I'm working for the French securities. We are talking about one guy who's supposed to be fired and has just been suspended. We are talking about one guy who were one week ago in the big bus, French bus, with the French World, uh, World, uh, French World Cup, French soccer yeah. team, World yeah. Cup, we are the champion. We're talking about this. And now, now, again, I just want some clarification. It's not a minor affair. It's just only uh, the, this young guys, which is in crisis. It's all the system. How do you explain that there is a big gap between what Gérard Collomb has, has said this morning and the chief of the police this afternoon? W That's the which, key point. Which, which point? What, what, what is Article 40. Yeah, and so? So, so Gérard Collomb was supposed to, uh, to, uh, to uh, provoke some decision very important about this, and he says, I was not aware. So we have the, the main guys who is who is supposed to know everything, because it's his job, he's the boss of the boss of the boss of all the cops, 
And he says, I didn't know. You know, I got the feeling it was exactly like The Godfather 2, you know, when we, you have the big trial. I didn't know, I didn't know. But I, that's I why think, I'm very scared. No, I, I don't think he said he, he didn't know. He, he got reported it's what he all says. this. He, I didn't know. He, but he, say, he said also the cabinet of the president had, ta had taken some uh, some action about, about it. And it, it was... Uh, as, as, as a report said, uh, Macron was in Australia at the time. He told his cabinet in Paris to deal with it appropriately, which I suppose was the best that he could do, given the circumstances. Um, fact of the matter. Mm. Let's bring in Nicholas uh, Vinica, who's editor of Political Europe, uh, with a very straight question, Nicholas. Do you think this is a scandal or are we exaggerating it? I think scandal is an appropriate word. I don't know if I would talk about a state crisis or um, anything, anything to that scale. But there are a few things here that are concerning and, and, uh, and, and do uh, merit this kind of attention. I have to say, um, you know, the parliamentary group starting this commission and, and bringing the uh, uh, cabinet members and people to question them, um, we can only applaud uh, that effort to get to the bottom of it. What is odd about this affair is why did the Elysee not take uh, more decisive action against this person immediately upon finding out about this? Why was he suspended for a mere two weeks, only for more disciplinary action to be taken later? I think that's why this uh, scandal, if you want to call it that, has got legs and why it continues to dominate uh, the news. It's because um, there seems to be not full disclosure from, from the LA, or not a full willingness immediately to, to take action. I mean, this is, these are obviously reprehensible actions on behalf of this person, and, and there was not a sort of immediate effort to, to clamp down, and that's a bit surprising. And the second thing is the silence or, or the lack of commentary um, from, from the president himself or from, from his entourage. There was a long silence, too long, uh, from the Elysee um, to shed light on this affair, and it's been filled by all kinds of other people. Um, and, and in fact, the president, I believe, has still not spoken about this. And all these things help to give oxygen to this, to this scandal, and, uh, and it does raise concerns. Nicholas Finica of Politico will be back to you very, very shortly. Can I bring in now Etienne Pujol, who's a lawyer and expert in labor law and employment law? Etienne, if you or I were out observing as Ben Aller was supposed to have been, and we did what he did, i.e. manhandled someone, struck somebody, you or I would be sacked straight away. Were you surprised to learn how Alexandre Ben Aller was dealt with by the Elysee? That's, that's a real concern for on an employer standpoint. I mean, the Elysee Palace is the employer of this person. And be, becoming aware of what this person did uh, in, in, on that date and with this process, protest, just making the decision to suspend him for a couple of weeks, whether or not he's been paid during that time, because there's an issue in this respect, because the spokesperson said that he, w he was not paid, but that's not what the law says. So we've got a concern in this respect, but becoming there, there of well, there's layer upon layer of of, of question here. I mean, so exactly. many questions need to be answered. It's it's, it's, it's a remarkable it's, story. It's blurred, and uh, we have to know how how we can find out uh, what what is at stake. But uh, from the employer standpoint, when you see what the guys uh, did on on that day, uh, a, a mere suspension of two weeks seems a little bit light, so to speak. Uh, the decision to dismiss him should have been made at that time, if, if the facts are accurate. Now he is dismissed for a totally uh, different reason, because you cannot uh, make a sanction of a person for twice for, for the same facts. So what double jeopardy? In exactly. Yeah. So what what is now taken into consideration to dismiss the, this person is the fact of having asked the tapes of what happened on May one and having received the, the, those tapes last week, which seems uh, a, a, a weaker ground for dismissal than what happened two, two months ago. Olga? Oh, j just to say, when, uh, when he got his first dismiss or uh, suspension, mm. uh, it, it was just to alert him that he, he's, he crossed the line, and, and if he does again, then he did again. Even, even if it's lower, then, then we show that we, have, we may not have confidence in, the, in the, this person. I think we, we talk about it was, it, it was a mistake, though, not to 
act quicker, wasn't it? I mean, just the suspension wasn't enough, was it? Sure. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not a judge for it, and I think there okay. will be there will be investigation for it. And I'm not quite sure. I've got a good um, uh, a good point uh, to, to know about that. it. But um, we, we we can discuss about it. But we we're not judge as a member of parliament also, and this is what also I. I blame the opposition. Is that the, the thing they are judging the the thing? So we we need some time to investigate, have some answer, and definitely we want some answer. Everyone, the majority and the opposition as well. But what, what happened, and I would like to point it, is that every the parliament has been blocked to every other work we were we were doing for this. Also, we react in less than 24 hours, and for all the weekend we also we keep. Going, having a point of order during uh, during the session, and we couldn't work on the other subject. So uh, there's there's two aspects so, of it. So that's the knock-on effect of this whole affair that it's put a halt to the uh, reforms and many of the things that La République en Marche are trying to get through. Yeah, yeah. Things have been put back. Things have been delayed. Um, this is obviously the sort of the real sort of like double-edged sword of damage that's been wielded. Yeah, really, yeah. Isn't it? And, and I just would like to uh, to talk back to about... Uh, Before we bring in uh, Cameron, because he needs yeah. to reply to what you said. You blamed oh, okay. him for being yeah, a judge. Just, yeah. just back, back, back to uh, some events in 2014 where we had someone who died because of a uh, 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 police fight. And, and the um, investigation came like a month after. Uh, so, so we just need to see what happened in the past with some other acts were really critical also, and someone died at this time. Mm. Um, so we, we really need to uh, uh, step back and, uh, and uh, look at it very seriously. Karim. I would like to uh, have some feedback from the President Macron regarding the moral crisis. Uh, because as Etienne mentioned, there is a, a gap between uh, what this guy has done and all the global internal process, which is linked to how administration, how country. So uh, the only response was someone must pay for that and these, these guys. I think it's not enough. And the other response is, OK, everything is put on hold. We, we should work. And regarding the, the work that you were doing, the members of parliament, it was a change of the constitution. And the change of constitution was less member of parliament and more power to the president. And that's something that we, we can, we, we, I would like to lay uh, emphasis regarding the situation. Because if we have, we have not had members of parliament uh, from the opposition, we have not had this kind of investigation like we have uh, we have had during the last uh, 48 hours. So that's something um, in that in this kind of uh, discussion debate, we need to know what kind of country we like to have in terms of constitution. And Macron, we have more and more power for one man, and we see what kind of um, uh, limits we have when we, everything is restricted and one man. Etienne. Yeah, there's also a law being passed before the French Parliament regarding fake news. And uh, th that's, uh, it, it's funny that it comes today when uh, Le Monde newspaper revealed what happened two months ago, where uh, other people should have revealed that, that, uh, that facts. And it's true that the, uh, the, the, the French media uh, should have uh, the, this kind of power to reveal the facts, the true mm. facts, and make, have the power to investigate on those facts. Otherwise, we would have not known what, what happened at this I time. suspect what you're saying will be music to the ear of Nicholas Vinica, who's listening to us uh, in Brussels. Mm. Nick, what do you think? I was going to say, on, on that last point, um, it does show us that something is, is working in France, which is, which is the media, which ultimately brought this affair to light. Uh, we now have a, a fully-fledged uh, parliamentary investigation into this affair, um, and ultimately we can expect consequences for, for everyone involved. But if we, if we take a step back to look at this, um, this is the first uh, serious scandal or even a crisis um, that has faced this president since he came into power uh, and stunned the world um, a bit more than a year ago. Uh, he promised to uh, be a pre an exemplary president. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and what, we have to, what we have to state here today is that there are so many questions surrounding what happened around this suspension, and there will have to be some sort of outcome. And I don't think anybody expects uh, the president to be troubled in his function. He's very safe in that role, and, and nothing like that could ever happen. What we're likely to see is somebody get sacrificed. Who made the decision to suspend him for two weeks instead of a more serious punishment? Who made the decision not to 
uh, uh, make a more serious investigation into these rather egregious acts of impersonating a police officer and going to beat a person during a demonstration. These are very serious uh, 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 user patient of somebody else's uh, profession, and they should have been investigated immediately. So now the question is, who is uh, who's going to be sacrificed? Um, is it somebody in Macron's entourage, his chief of staff, Alexei Kohler? We know this is extremely important person for conducting the president's affairs. Or is it going to be his chief of cabinet? Um, I think we should, you know, look at look at these questions and think: Where does this thing end, and how does Macron draw a line under this affair to say now it's over? And thank you, sir, for bringing that to a very neat close for this first part of the France Inquête debate. We will be uh, starting up again in part two very shortly. Welcome back to the France Inquête debate. During the break, the debate has continued in the studio, the controversy whizzing around Emmanuel Macron. Just what did the French president know about the man at the centre of the affair? Alexandre Benalla, our guest to discuss the implications of what's now becoming the Macron-Benalla affair, are Olga Givenet, Member of Parliament for Emmanuel Macron's uh, La République en Marche. Thank you very much for being with us. On the other side of our studio, Karim Bouamran, who's spokesperson for the Socialist Party. Great to see you. Etienne Pujol is a lawyer, expert in labour and employment law. Etienne, thanks for being with us. And joining us by satellite from Brussels, Nicholas Vinica, who is the editor of Politico Europe. Nicholas, thanks for being with us. So what did Macron actually know? What seems embarrassingly certain is that the interior minister knew very little. Gérard Collomb faced questions from the special inquiry, which has been set up at the National Assembly to investigate this Macron-Benalla affair. It was not until I got back from lunch early in the afternoon that during one of our daily briefings, my chief of staff informed me of the existence of a video showing acts of violence during May Day protests. He said that Alexandre Benalla had been identified as taking part in the violence. He then told me that he had informed the Paris police chief and that he had brought the case to the attention of the office of the President of the Republic. Mr. Benalla not being under my direct supervision and considering that the President's office as well as the Paris police chief had all the necessary information to act, I considered that the facts which had been reported were being dealt with on an appropriate level and that I did not need to take care of the matter. Listening again to the Interior Minister's words, these three in the studio chatting away about it. There's lots more to talk about here in this debate. So replying to Colomb later on, the uh, Paris Chief of Police, uh, Michel Delpech, uh, had his say condemning what he called unhealthy cronyism. As observers have suggested, this case is not without consequences for the Paris Police Department. Crucially, these events are the result of unacceptable, reprehensible individual behaviour against a backdrop of cronyism. Michel Delpouche, the uh, préfet de police here in Paris. The question to start part two then of this France Inquête debate is who will be the fall guy of this affair? Whose head is most likely to roll? Um, Olga, that's probably not the question you wanted me to put to you, but I'll start with you. I would like to come back with uh, about the fake news. We talked Go about ahead. fake Go news ahead. before. It was a law we did. It's mm. actually a manip manipulation of news, the, the real a name of the law and how, when you manipulate news it, it does mean that you can change the news but also when when you actually uh, put them in front of everyone and uh, for this story it's back in may how come it comes now um it's a question that i'd like answered yeah. I, I i'd like some some answer as well because we are in in the calendar that we are we are talking about constitution and back to mm. it and you talk just before about the constitution i we were talking about reducing seats for the uh, member of parliament, and we know that the opposition is not happy with it. Uh, they've been they've been pushing and pushing uh, again for for a few weeks, and now we have this affair. So I'm questioning also how how it's been used um, to, to. You're not implying this is fake news. Are you saying this is fake news? I, I'm not saying it's fake okay. news. I'm saying it's manipulation of news. So how come we just don't deal with it when every when it was already on social network? Manipulation uh, of the, news by by whom? Who's who's doing the manipulating? Do you think? 
Uh, or the uh, w we know that uh, uh, France and Bao, the, 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 the r far left party, is okay. actually uh, be behind it with uh, with uh, the, the video and things. So we also know that um, uh, they use I'm using the, the the this kind of thing to to make uh, some S some of. Karim's not from France and Bao. He's from no. the socialists. Go yes. ahead, sir. Yeah, but just oh, I'm not sure to have understood exactly what you mentioned, Olga. Do you mean that? This kind of uh, video tape, what we have seen with Mr. Banala, could be something who has been provoked by the opposition in order to put on hold what's happened in the new constitution? I, That's I, what you mentioned? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just questioning as, I, 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 as Come you on. question. Come on. Do you realize this kind of picture? Do you realize what even, even, even your, how, Ministry Gérard Collomb has mentioned that this is something very, very sensitive, what, sensible, sensitive? Sen sensitive. Sensitive, what happened uh, during the last uh, four, five, six days and May, uh, May 1st. Even the chief of the police has, has, has pointed out what's happened. And you say, you mentioned that, okay, it could be fake news, it could be something used by videotape, no, 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 it could no. be... I didn't say it fake news, it's, I'm it's, saying it's the it's timing, manipul it's the it's the timing, timing, timing of kind of conspiracy. The time, okay. the, the time has been manipulated uh, before uh, saying that the investigation also make all about Benalla's affair, but it's also um, make all the circumstances of it and the context of it. And how, how come the protester were here? And apparently they, they throw things at the policemen as well. We need to know the Nothing is the right way to, uh, well, you, to you discuss can, the you topic. Can say, I you think can, the right way is to say, okay, you, you honestly, can say, who is, can I, can who is, I just who is the responsible? You can't really say uh, we make we make some supposition if you don't make supposition to everything what happened around the context. Okay, I, I, have, a, let, I, I have a question, I have a question. If, if that's the case, Olga, then why didn't the Elysee, when the Elysee knew, why didn't Macron's office come clean and go public with the story and say, look, this has happened, it's a disgrace, and we're correcting it? The point. Why, why was it all kind of like I, I, not, not talked about? Well, well, we know that b b between uh, between all of the people, the manifestation, we, we knew that, that we had black, black blockers, and um, we, we want to make it peaceful, as peaceful as possible, because we know about also all the uh, so uh, sellers around. So you have a strange around, way of and, to and make peace sure, with Benalla. And make sure that Very it's strange. as peaceful as possible. We knew that we are we were in a difficult uh There are time, some people who turn up just to cause trouble, it, that's true. They cause trouble. True, it's true. It's true. So, so we definitely need to be back in May what mm. happened in France, what was the uh, law changing, what mm. was the context of the s social concert text as well. And we need to make sure and, 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 and make a balance for it. But those two people uh, were neither wearing balaclavas, they, were, they, they could see their face. One was a woman, one was mm. a man. They were both very, very badly treated by mm. this gentleman who and, would then and find out it's called Alexandre where, Benalla. Where are they? Close to the coffee. And that, that wasn't when the, the, when the Elysee knew, the Elysee didn't go public on it. They decided to remain quiet on it. And that's, I think, it's one of the questions people weren't answering. Why was that decision taken? Who knew what, when, and why didn't the people get to know about it before yeah, these yeah. videos were released? Uh, but are those by, people by mentioned something? Left, have, 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 have they complained about it? I mean, I mean, there's all of this thing as well. Um, so we need to find out all the sure. circumstances. It'd be interesting to find out mm. why they didn't come forward and complain. Yeah. And obviously, maybe they have no faith in the justice system, which is another fact, because I mean, you know, once when I was a young man, I was hit by a police officer. I didn't go and complain about it because I knew and, and I thought it wouldn't go anywhere, you know? Probably, so <laughs> no, but, but probably they should. Um, mm. they, they I agree they, with what you're saying yeah. completely. Nicholas, Nicholas Vinica in Brussels, sir, uh, listening to everything intently. What are your thoughts? I'm interested to know who you feel might become the scapegoat of this affair. Well, they say there's the president's uh, chief of staff, Mr. Strozda, who is near um, retirement, mm -hmm. the head of cabinet, mm -hmm. um, who could be a possible scapegoat if indeed uh, a, a sacrifice is required. Um, as I said before, Alexei Kohler is one of the closest collaborators to the president. He is there every minute of every day, making sure the, the estate apparatus runs smoothly. And uh, I would be very surprised if the president could do without Mr. Kohler. Um, but I think it will be someone in that entourage. And, and that would be my supposition about how this affair ends. There will be someone responsible for taking that decision to suspend and not investigate further. And that person will be, will be held responsible. I just want to make one more comment on the context and a little bit the cultural context of this affair and why it has gripped 
uh, French imagination so much. There is a history around the French presidency of um, security forces or, or police forces that are not controlled by uh, the, the regular uh, the regular police forces that are not controlled by the interior ministry and that act as an, a sort of um, a, a personal security force and a personal intelligence agents for, for the president. And that's what this affair is bringing to mind. How could this person, who is one of the president's personal security detail, simply gallivant around town exactly as he pleased, be granted permission to go beat people up in a protest, and then be given a slap on the wrist. This is what people are objecting to. Why did there seem to be special circumstances, special allowances made for this person who we know was so close to the president that he had keys to the presidential uh, uh, couple's uh, 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 getaway in, in Le Touquet in northern France. That's how close he was. Why was he given special tools? And, and, and what is, and how come he was not affiliated to the police in any way, and yet he had certain privileges that a police officer would have? These are troubling for French people who have memory of prior incidents like this, of, of mm -hmm. hidden cabinets, hidden police officers, hidden intelligence agents. Nicholas Finnick, you've hit the nail on the head several times there. Thank you very much indeed, sir. Stay with us because your input is vital to this debate. Let's, before we bring in our guests again, take a listen to some political response to today's discussions. Why did this man receive so many favors by the government when he does not represent it? Today, the French people await an explanation from the President of the Republic, and it is necessary that at some point he gives his version of the facts. We have an interior minister who told this commission that he doesn't know the professional status of Mr. Benalla and thought he was a policeman. If the minister doesn't know who's in charge of the president's security, you got to admit it's strange. It's worrying because the presence of a parallel police force under the sole responsibility of the Élysée Palace is incompatible with a democratic system in which the rule of law prevails. Extreme right, extreme left. We've got the centre left here. We've got the centre here as well. And we have a lawyer. And we have Nicholas Vinicker as well. We've got every angle covered, I think, on this story. Um, and what I find interesting about what we've just heard is that you could call those people extremists, but the questions they're answering, asking, sorry, the questions that everybody wants answered, whatever your political persuasion is. I think even you'd like some of those questions answered, Olga. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, and, and I really think it is still an individual subject from an individual person who abused from the trust at some stage and could go and, and do what he did. But, but he shouldn't but have. But Macron that. surely knew about the deal he had, the access he had, as Nicholas was saying, there's the fact that he's got the keys to the getaway in Le Touquet, that kind of thing. And the actual employment contract, Etienne, that Ben Allah clearly had, the amount of money he's being paid, which seemed like a phenomenal amount, the, the car with the siren on, all the little trappings that he had. It's a remarkable thing for someone who's 26 year old with no particular background mm. in high security. Surely. I mean, as an employer, you, you can propose everything to, to your employee. It depends on the services he, he, he provides you with. The, the issue is, after what happened on May 1, and after what the employer, so the Elise Palace, knew at that time, how did it come that this person stay on, stayed on board? And as you said, he was still there last week in the coach of the, of the French uh, soccer player. I mean, he, he was there. So Mr. Castaner said this morning was handling their luggage. It's just nuts. It's crazy. Uh, he spent 10,000 euros a month plus uh, the, his apartment rented for him uh, just to handle luggage of the French soccer player. And, uh, to, to, be, to be fair, though, if England won the World Cup, I'd have carried their luggage. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, that, there's, there are certain have photograph as well, different, <laughs> different things in different circumstances, perhaps. So that's, yeah, a, bit, it, that's it, a bit atypical. But, but the deal is phenomenal for, for a guy who doesn't appear to be... Yeah. Yeah, he, he provided services. Maybe his employer was very happy about, with, uh, with the services he rendered. But the thing is that after what came out on May 1, which the employer knew, which is for sure, mm -hmm. how does it come that he's still there and facing the political risk of these facts being disclosed worldwide, which just happened last week? So, so one point regarding who will take the benefits about this crisis, this mm -hmm. political crisis, we, we have seen Marine Le Pen, mm -hmm. uh, who spoke with the journalist, so I'm very, very scared because all the main uh, policy for Macron one year ago was transparency. I will be an example for the Republic, 
a new wave in this country, I'm young, startup, etc., etc. And now they realize that there is a gap between um, what he has uh, told us one year ago and now his crisis. Who is responsible? I don't know. What I know is that there is a gap between what the chief of the police has mentioned this afternoon and what uh, the ministry has uh, mentioned this morning. But Marine Le Pen will take all the benefits and we have a, a very crucial election next year for European. And I'm very, I'm very concerned about what will be the results in France. Now, the word that uh, the chief of police used was um, copinage malsain, which I think exactly, is yeah, yeah, healthy yeah, yeah. cronyism. Cronyism is unhealthy anyway, so it's tautological. But for your party, Olga, to be, it is your party being accused of it because it, it, it all revolves around La République en Marche. It must be a very difficult time for you, and you must, it must be very difficult to kind of like rebut and push away that criti criticism when you see all the evidence are, that's stacking up. No, and, and we try to understand as well what happened. To tell you the truth, we'd rather actually uh, be still on the uh, World Cup success, sure. uh, sure. uh, which was, was, was just one week ago. And Macron didn't get a bounce from that, did he? It didn't help his ratings at all, did No, it? no, yeah, um, definitely. But we, we need to deal with it. It's a situation and we definitely need to deal, deal with it. You talk about the exemplarity of um, what the president wanted for for, for the thing, it doesn't mean that you just go and ev everyone is exemplar. It's, mm. it's, yeah, yeah, it's, sure. not, it's not possible. That's, it's not a perfect but, world. No, but and, and just to remind you, when it was uh, the Fillon affair, uh, Emmanuel Macron didn't make any comment on it. He just say it's a, it's a bad time. Let's get the, the justice go through it, and 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 this is what's going to happen here. Let's let's go through the process now to understand and make sure it doesn't happen again that just not one single guy go on and be a sheriff in the middle of something just because it's, he's at the Elysee. And I, and, and I think um, he had the trust of uh, his colleague and I think the colleague as well are quite disappointed now which, in uh, which um, yeah, uh, How can we rely situation? on the police right now when you have a big demonstration? What, 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 how, we, how, how can we know if we don't have other Mr. Alexander... Uh, uh, Benal? Benal. 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 Well, Benal. The, Benal. The, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, the, the police uh, make it. Uh, make him I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Looks like. Well, don't one, know. one of the issues, though, that, 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 that strikes me about France and the way these things are done and how policing happens is that it's, it's not unusual to see the police laying into, kicking, punching, striking people who are demonstrating, who are demonstrating. And I've spoken to some of those people and it was unprovoked. And that happens. And that's a horrible thing. Mm. It's the fact that someone who's so close to Macron, who has his confidence then puts on the garb of a police officer, mm. impersonating a police officer, and then goes and does the same mm. thing. I mean, that's, that's the shocking element. Mm. And that's why someone somewhere has to pay, if, isn't it? <laughs> go, Nicholas, go ahead. Yeah. Nicholas yeah. in Brussels, go on. I, I just, I, I agree with that, and, and I think, thank you. Um, and I, I, think, I think we've touched on the important points. Um, I would like to attempt to introduce just a, a bit of, no, a, one note of proportion uh, into this scandal, which uh, on second thought I don't think is a crisis of state. Um, you know, this is comparable to cases of U.S. Secret Service members misbehaving on the job, getting drunk in a hotel room on a trip, uh, uh, doing things like that, um, and, and being covered for their actions or not being fired before. That happened under the Obama administration, and those people ended up being suspended. Um, this is a bit more egregious, but ultimately, are we talking about anything that, uh, you know, th may there's some question of perhaps Macron or his entourage having uh, not come down as hard as they could have on this individual immediately. But we're not talking about some kind of corruption. I would like to remind people that there's another scandal going on, which is the Trump-Russia investigation, where we talk about uh, one state helping a candidate um, uh, trying to uh, uh, become mm. elected as president of the United States and, and much graver suspicions. Um, so I just wanted to put these, these two things next to each other. Um, France is uh, a country that uh, likes a good scandal and which hasn't had one in the past year, which has had a nearly all-powerful president which, who has exerted extreme control over his image. And all of a sudden, there's an opportunity to go, to go at, at this president, and people are obviously taking it. But I just want to say, let's keep that sense of proportion about what this is about. So, Nicholas, thank you very much indeed, Nicholas uh, Vinica, who's the uh, editor of Politico Europe, bringing a bit of proportion into this debate and basically letting us see that this is a scandal and not 
an affaire d'état or a federal case, as you might put it in American uh, parlance, I suppose. But it leaves the question for me, and I'll put this to all three of you here around the table. Surely Macron's judgment has to be called into question, the fact that this has happened in the way it's happened, his, his judgment, his, 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 his way of knowing whether people are the right people or not, that kind of thing. It's that judgment issue. Etienne, can I ask you about that from your perspective? Well, he's supposed to be the one making the decisions, especially regarding someone who is so close to him. <clears throat> As you were saying, I mean, he has the keys of his household. I mean, he was very close to him for years, I mean, couple, at least a couple of years. So he knew him, he knows him very well. So he, he should not be affected by these uh, personal feelings regarding this person. But as a professional, as, an, as the employer, taking just the fact, uh, the facts are, are they were on May 1, what this guy did, he was supposed to make the appropriate decision as, as the employer of that person. Whoever was in, in, uh, knew, knew exactly w what happened, he was the one in charge, he's the one who employs him. So he's the one to, supposed to make the decision and the appropriate one taking into account the obviously legal risk, but also the political risk. And we know now today what the political risks are. Etienne Pujol, thank you very much indeed. Thanks to Karim Bouaran from the Socialist Party. Great to see you, sir. Thanks Likewise. especially to Olga Givenet for being brave, biting, <laughs> biting the bullet and coming in to talk to us at a time when many people from La République en Marche would have said, no way, we're not going on TV. Thank you for facing the music. And thanks to Nicholas Vinica, editor of Political Europe, joining us from Brussels for your perspective, sir. Thank you very much indeed. More on this, of course, in Media Watch coming up now. Media Watch means James Creighton. I'll encourage our guests to sit and wait to hear what James has to say, if that's OK. James, over to you. Emmanuel Hi, Macron, not tweeted for four days, Olga. He hasn't tweeted for four days. Go ahead. Well, I mean, it's just notable. I suppose a lot of people saying that uh, the, 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 the lack of communication is one of the more notable things. And indeed, if you scroll down through uh, Emmanuel Macron's Twitter account, he, he multiple tweets every day since the beginning of his presidency, and now you have this long period of silence. We also see that he's cancelling uh, his, his uh, attendance of uh, one the leg of the France, Tour de France yeah. on Wednesday. So we could have up to a week of almost no official communication from mm. Emmanuel Macron or indeed spokespeople, uh, you know, the at Elysee Twitter account, Bruno sure. Rajipiti. So that's, that in itself shows that there's a real uh, crisis being managed uh, at the Elysee Palace. Um, or yet not, you as had, the case may be, because right. if they're not talking and not communicating, then it doesn't feel like management, does it? Right. We've heard from Ben Alla himself, though. Alex we have, Benalla. we have, we have, We haven't yes. heard from Emmanuel Macron, but we've heard from uh, Ben Alla, who, uh, through his lawyer, uh, said that he is st stunned by uh, this, uh, the way in which it, this is being uh, handled, uh, and uh, saying that it's being, that, uh, the, 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 the scandal has been used to target the president. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, you know France is going through a serious political scandal when its president decides it won't be a good idea this year to follow a Tour de France mountain stage as planned. So there you go. That's kind of uh, just going through some of the, the elements that came out in the last 24 hours. Um, we've been learning that uh, Alexandre Benalla was apparently uh, overseeing the reorganisation of Emmanuel Macron's security in a bid to uh, change how that functioned, communication between different services and whatnot, whether or not um, he had taken on more responsibility than he, he was allowed to have before that reorganisation was formalised. Uh, we'll have to wait and see in that regard. Uh, but that's one element of information that uh, that was that did come out. Then photos, uh, various media releasing, fo releasing photos that seem to contradict uh, the official line of uh, uh, the Elysee Palace, which uh, said uh, that when he was in a two-week period after the 1st of May inc uh, incident, when he, that he was mm. taken away out of his functions <clears throat> for two weeks and that he wasn't uh, accompanying the president. There are photos that show that he was accompanying the president at various moments, such as at Giverny here on the 13th of July. So clearly uh, the, there was an attempt to cover up aspects of, uh, of, uh, of this. And we've also discovered uh, L'Express here with this piece of information that, uh, uh, that he had ex ex extensive privileges, for example, um, a, a, an apartment uh, that, uh, on Quai Branly that was being doubled in size. Uh, there was a 180,000 euro budget uh, to double this, all of this since the incident. So it is, I think this is what's shocking a lot of people when the official line is that he was punished. That's what was said, that he got one of the more severe punishments uh, ever in the history of the Elysee Palace staff members. And actually what we're realising is 
after the incident, he was getting a, an official apartment and an official apartment that was being enlarged. So clearly he was getting special treatment. And questions are being asked by editorial writers across the French press as to why, what's going on, why was he being given so much uh, special treatment? Did he, you know, mm. what else could emerge about information that he might have? Why, why this special treatment? People are scratching their heads about that. In Olga, well, why, why that special treatment? I don't know. We're going to have some answer. But I would just like to remind that we see all this picture with uh, Alexandre Benalla, mm. with Emmanuel Macron. He's got other bodyguard. And Emmanuel Macron has been on, um, in my um, area a few weeks ago. And it was not Alexandre Benalla uh, who, who was with him. Right. So he's got lots of other people. It looks like this guy, he's the only, uh, he's the only one close to Emmanuel Macron. But he's a president. Right. He's got many of people around him. Right. Walking so all he, day long. It, it looks like he was part of the inner circle, a trusted uh, member of the inner circle. But I guess just, I mean, there's so much on this, but I, I'll, I'll finish with this tweet by Raphael Glucksmann. I think it kind of sums up what a lot of the editorial writers have been saying, because it's a problem of image fundamentally, mm. a problem of communications. Mm. And when you speak about an exemplary republic, and then you have this uh, sort of management style that is very monarchical, there's a, there's a contradiction there. And so I suppose the, what was being said during the campaign trail about a new dawn, you know, a new world, if you like, uh, it's not so much a dawn as a uh, crepuscule, as a, as a dusk. That's how <laughs> Raphael Luxman is putting it. So that's very grim. <laughs> but uh, this, is somebody, this is somebody who supported Emmanuel Macron uh, during his campaign as well. So I think it shows that... Uh, uh, this is quite, yeah. a, quite a crisis of communications, for sure. There's a lot of disappointment yeah. indeed, from people who were supportive to him and uh, say, realizing that he's behaving the we will, same way be as before. We need to leave it there, I'm afraid. But this debate obviously will continue. Thank you for watching. Stay with us here on France Academy.